Welcome back to another episode of The Last Storm. My name is Mark. I'm back with Dave. We're here to talk about the Thunder. And, well, we got a couple of things to talk about on the day of the playing game where we face the Pelicans. We've talked a lot about the Pelicans. If you guys want to hear what we have to say about that, check it out. There's a ton of people talking about this matchup. It's exciting. But overall, when you look back and you say, what are we going to be talking about in 20 years from now? Um, we're really talking about how Sam Presti redefined the rebuild. Yeah, and, and this all begins in, Mark, was it Vermont, the, the mountains of Vermont? Yeah, that's a, that's our legend. That's how we like to go. So uh, we like to we like to, to tell a story as if it was like, um, you know, um, man, what was that guy in Alaska that was named Sam? Um, you know, I know what I'm the story, about? but I can't remember the name of it. Gosh, it was a poem our granddad used to read to us every every Sam Christmas. McGee. Yeah, Sam McGee. Sam McGee, right? The Cremation story of Sam, Sam McGee, McGee guys. Um, and to us, that's how we like to tell the story. Is because when Sam separated himself from the rest of the world and got into the the mountains and the forest of Vermont, um, in a way got lost because he recognized life was changing things as he knew it was changing. And he was either going to be on board, right? With that change and embrace the change, or he was going to go down with a ship and the going down with the ship was, you know, basically holding on to every single one of these players until they were older and they were done and not trading them and trying to go for, you know, another win and another win and another win. And never getting there. Or he could look at the strength of the draft of the next coming three, four years and pretty much make the prediction that this is the way to go. Because if I draft this way and I draft draft properly, I can make this rebuild happen in two or three years. And what's happened is it's it's two, pretty much two years, three seasons, two and a half years, but the seasons are all whack because of COVID. So if you think about it, Sam has completed the rebuild in three seasons. And if you think about that in history, when has a team done that? When you talk about complete rebuild, like what we have Dort and Shea from the original squad there. When I say the original squad, we're talking about the Chris Paul squad, right? The first, the first teardown part. Okay. That's it guys. We got nobody left from it, the rest of it. And why is that important? Well, it's been important because those guys are the ones who are saying, Hey, listen, this is where we can be at. Right. When I say this is where it can be at, top five in the West is where I think that we can be at next year. So that's what's important for this team to understand is the push now. And I understand what Sam Presti has done on a whole new level because we've been sitting here and, and dissecting it and looking at the draft picks and looking at how many he's accumulated and recognizing that there's a good chance that the Houston Astros are going to, or Houston Astros, Houston uh, uh, is going to suck next year. Rockets are going to suck. Man, fuck. The Houston Rockets are going to suck, right? If they suck, we got a pick from them that's only top four protected. Think about that, guys. We could have another lottery pick next year, no matter how we finish. Okay? Like, that's why I keep on going back to this over and over and over again. Like, what Sam has done is looked at the future and said, this will do well here. This will return better here. I will make a trade with this team right here because, in my opinion, Kwai and... Uh, uh, PG-13 won't stay healthy enough for a season for them to be atop of the West. And guess what? He bet right. If he had sent um, uh, PG-13 and uh, um, Russ and everybody else, right? Let's just say Kawhi had stayed in Toronto, okay? And he had sent those three guys pretty much to Toronto, keeping Kawhi there. They would have had, what, two or three championships? You know, like, that's what I'm saying is, like, what Sam did was he recognized and wagered his success and other teams' failures in the future and now. And he's bet so so correctly so far. I mean, think about it. Got J-Dub. I mean, what, if that's all we get from them, mm -hmm. that's perfect. But he bet, got J-Dub after he got Shea. <laughs> all right. right. We can keep going down this, guys. And, and the list is going to continue to go. And. Well, I like what you're saying because, you know, you look at all these guys and the, most of the guys that we've been able to succeed in, um, you know, somebody mentioned we should call it a retool instead of a rebuild. Oh, and I, I like that. that. Who, some guy told us that, right. that but it was, so, it was perfect, man. Right. And, but like most of the people that we have been able to be successful with, with the exception really of just Josh Giddy, you know, we've been able to make it back to the play-in or make it to the play-in for the first time, but back to the postseason um, with just one player from our own drafting, from being, you know, at the, you know, top 
10 picks or because you can't count chat getting, right now you can't count chat so everybody else has been a product of the retooling or of the teardown however you want to call it and retooling but that's so important to understand is like then you have a player like chet who will be coming in and he'll be able to build on top of what we already have whereas you look at a player like joel Embiid, where the process sixers were able to get like one good player um maybe two if you count ben simmons whenever you know he was you know balling um but like then they had to be the guys that they had to build everything around. Whereas having someone like Chet come in after Shea and Giddy and J-Dub are already successful and still owning our own picks, like you said, and having future picks in the lottery that are on their way, both from Houston and from the Clippers and from anything else that comes up, because there's going to be a lot of opportunities for us to, you know, for players that we don't want to extend to send other places um, and as we talked about in previous episodes, the increased importance of the CBA and the, the draft as it pertains to teams once they're trying to contend. We've been saying this for a long time, but it seems like it resonates even more true now that we're not going to package all of our picks to go get a player. Those picks are, are ultimately um, equivalent How you to... you build. Yeah, yeah, but once you've already become great, or been, become the top of the league, how you stay great. There, your ability to infuse talent into your team. If you just go give those away for a single infusion of talent, then you're going to miss out long run. I mean, think about this. When was the Warriors' first championship? Right? It's been like seven years, eight years? Yeah, 2015, I think. Yeah, something like that. Eight years, nine years, whatever. Think about that, guys. That is the normal uh, span of what I would consider a dynasty. If you think about the Bulls, uh, you know, really 90 through 96, 97, whatever. So, you know, maybe 98, whatever. You had this time period where it's about eight years. What Sam Presti's trying to do, guys, is he's not trying to make it an eight-year time period. Think about that. He's trying to make it a 16-year time period. So by trading all the assets you've already accumulated, and for the next seven years, the most um, valuable assets in the NBA are going to be draft picks for the next seven years. Because... It's going to be how you are able to, you know, round your team off. And you don't have to go get junk players to round off your with your superstars. But teams are going to have to be able to, like, it, it, dude, teams like the Lakers are going to have superstars and then just play pure shit. Like, guys that would not even make other teams, right? And mm -hmm. it's just going to be, that's how it's built. And then you look at teams like the, the Thunder that are going to be like, okay, we're going to take this player in the draft and we're going to take this player. Oh, we're going to pick up three players from the draft this year. You know, like, why are they Thunder doing that? Well, they're, they're getting rid of some players. They're moving some players off the board, and they're starting to, to retool within a small time period because we've seen what happens when Sam Presti decides to retool. It takes him three years. So if we know this, it only takes him three years. When the time period that comes with Shea's getting to that age that I, I would like to say um, Sam Presti's looking to move him at 31, 32 years old, where he's becoming an old player, if Sam Presti wants to move him at that age, and not keep him, and so we build statues of, of, of Shea in Oklahoma City, right? And he wants to retool by the draft picks that he'll be able to receive from Shea, then guess what? He'll be able to do that and then push our limit out yet again for another eight years. All right. And now that's you, what's so impressive. Now you're going to bother some people by talking about that. But in the end, but, but we're, ta we're talking about, we're talking about, you know, eight, nine years down the road, guys. And, 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 and yes, I never want to trade Shea. Right, I want him to retire in Oklahoma City. But that's City. how it ended with with Russ too. Let's just face yeah. it. Let's just face it though. Like Sam Presti has given us a a, a template of what's going to happen. He sends players where they want to go later in their career. Whether it's Chris Paul to the Suns. Thank you for the couple of years you gave Oklahoma. Actually, three years you gave Oklahoma City. Right. When you uh, he did his it first for PG thirteen. He sent yeah. him where he wanted to go. Sent Russ to Houston because that's where Russ wanted to go. You know, like, this is what Sam does. Like, a player says, hey, I've, I've spent 10 years in this organization, 11 years in this organization. Um, I really appreciate everything you've done. But me and my family really want to have some time in blank. You know, like, a team just opened up in blank, and we want to go there. And, you know, Sam Presti will sit him down and be like, you know what? I told you if you ever wanted to go, I would, I would sit down and help you go. And that's what Sam Presti's um, done. He has changed the way that he has been GM. You can't, cannot say, hey, I own your right for four years. You don't have any say in it. For the next four years, you work for my team because that's, that shows like a place of ownership. That's old NBA, right? Right. Isn't that kind of what took down the bulls in a way and so yeah. many different things, right? Yeah. Like you don't do that. Like now you're like, hey, listen, 
Let's work with each other. Sam Presti understood that. He changed the style of how a GM acts because you work with a player. Because why do you work with a player? Because players are all connected somehow. They all talk. They all tell each other what's up. And if Sam Presti is the one guy that sends players where they want to go, guess what Al Harford's going to do when he wants to be traded? Hey, I'd like to go to Oklahoma City. Why? Because I'm going to go to Oklahoma City, play maybe half a year, and Sam Presti's going to send me where I want to go next year. Mm -hmm. Dude, this is what needs to happen. Like, players are going to start recognizing what Sam Presti is doing for them. They're going to start recognizing it. And, yes, that means that some players in the organization will have to take discounts to come here and stay here. But this is not going to be a James Harden situation where all of a sudden we're turning down a player because of $5 million a year. Guess what happened with James Harden? We all know now. James Harden was a nutcase. And he wanted to go. Controlling the locker room. Right? Yeah. We all know that now. But at the time, we didn't know. We didn't know that James Harden was probably going to take down Russ and KD way before the end was inevitable. Sam saw that, though. And, and, and I love the aspect of what James Harden brought to us. But, we, but now looking back and, and recognizing that there's a certain attitude, there's a certain mentality, there's a certain way of holding yourself in the organization. And if you don't have it, you don't have it. If you don't want it, you don't get it. You get the fuck out of here. Because this organization is about professionalism. Teaching players how to be professional athletes, guys. And you think that's easy, right? How many first-round draft picks don't make it every single year? The majority. Because they're not in the right organization. Right. I mean, you're hitting on... People don't give a shit about development. 